Greetings, Eric Backer, naturopath, back again. Talk about dying to me, but fragilis parasite. This time we're going to talk about the best diet or the best foods to eat when you've got parasites. Well, I just had a bit of a look around the internet, like I normally do when I do videos. I see what kind of you know ideas people have got. I've looked at some YouTube videos, seen some crazy stuff out there. Uh, you know, recommendations. One of my more uh, memorable favorite ones was a guy saying that you need to drink, drink vodka once or twice per day with these different kinds of herbs soaked in it for parasites. What a beauty. What a great suggestion. So if you don't fall over and get injured from drunkenness, you know, um, at least you're not going to, you know, not going to worry too much about parasites, are you? If, you, if you get drunk, I suppose. I want you to be careful with the kind of advice that you follow on the internet when it comes to health. Not just the parasites, you know, like what we're talking about, but in general. There are so many wacky people out there. There's so much crazy advice. It's very easy if you haven't got training or a good understanding of medicine, you know, to follow some of these people. I mean, the vodka suggestion's a bit over the top. A bit stupid. But there are a lot of other suggestions out there which may seem, you know, plausible or quite credible. But when you really think about them, they're actually quite crazy. So... A good diet for parasites is the same dietary approach I would recommend for a candida yeast infection. Generally, I find the meats not to be an issue with parasites. If you're a vegetarian or vegan kind of person, you may need to look more, uh, you know, obviously at plant-based proteins because you don't need to eat meat uh, necessarily. But I, I find that meat generally is quite okay if you've got parasites. You don't have too much of an issue. The green vegetables generally tend to be quite okay as well. You need to be very cautious of fruits and sweet foods, just like you do with candida. Be careful of the allergy kind of foods, you know, foods that may react with you in terms of an allergic sense. Because many people with parasites have got, can have quite a compromised leaky gut and can really react strongly to lots of different kinds of foods. So dairy products generally, cow dairy products, if it's sheep or goat, you're generally not too bad, but if it's cow, you need to be very cautious of those kinds of foods. Uh, they can really play up on the digestive system of a person with a parasite. Um, fruits, very cautious with fruits because of the sugar content. Even more so with parasites than with candida. Um, I'd recommend you be very careful with fruits. Most fruits need to be stopped. Sometimes even apples aren't tolerated by people with uh, dying to meter. Even green apples, even avocados can play up. So, um, And again, the diet needs to be tailored or changed really to suit your specific needs. Sometimes the infestations are so bad, it doesn't really matter what people eat. They just have to eat what they can eat and avoid what aggravates them. That's other good advice I can give you. So if you can, focus on the garlic. Garlic is, tends to be one of the better foods for people with parasites, raw garlic. Now, very small amounts um, are only necessary. You don't need to eat like large amounts of raw garlic. Even just one or two fine slices off a clove mixed in with food uh, can be quite suitable. One of my favorite um, um, foods really for people with a parasite problem is when summertime comes along is to put a lot more of the fresh herbs into the diet. So pretty hard to do in winter time, but in spring and summer, plant lots of different fresh herbs. I've spoken about this before with the candida um, video. Oregano, basil, rosemary, thyme, marjoram, all these kinds of herbs. They're quite good when it comes to parasites because they contain a lot of different compounds like phenols. If we look at oregano, for example, with the high cavacrol content, this is very, very good for parasites indeed. And I noticed you can get different types of oreganos. If you go to a plant nursery, you can get the hot, spicy ones. You can get the mild ones. So have a good look around and try to grow different types of oregano. And oregano mixes very well with many different types of salads, meat dishes, you know, savory dishes. It's a very good herb to grow and incorporate into your diet if you've got uh, a yeast infection. As I mentioned, be careful of the potential allergy foods. Chocolate's definitely on the allergy list. Bananas, oranges, a lot of fruits are. Dairy products. Sugar, of course, you can even have allergies against sugar. So just just be cautious. You should be fine to have a fermented or cultured food in your diet if you've got an issue um, with a parasite.
but again you need to really experiment here because one food may really aggravate you another food may be quite okay uh, to try and as I mentioned before if you modify the food the starch particularly with the heat you may be able to tolerate it a lot more your gut may tolerate it more without uh, you know suffering the consequences uh, and the end result could be gas or bloating if you look at sweet potatoes for example or potatoes they might be fine baked, but again, not good if they're just boiled or mashed. Same with chickpeas, same with rice. You know, um, you need to just try and experiment yourself and see how you go. And it should work out quite okay for you. As you get a handle on the parasites and the numbers diminish, you'll find the digestion improves and the tolerability for many different foods will increase significantly. All right. But remember, many parasites have got this ability to come back a bit like a politician you know who's been knocked knocked down and they come back again in the long run so uh, yeah that, that will give you a bit of an indication really on how you have to really um, taper your treatment you might may need to go more severe at certain stages and back off at other stages but don't be fooled by parasites because it's easy for them to go dormant for a while or have low level of activity and then come back up again I've seen this in many different cases so you'll need to keep the diet quite tidy for six months, if not 12 months, especially if you've been sick for a long time. So that gives you a bit of an indication on the diet. Salt is another um, additive I want you to have in your diet. Pepper and salt seem to be quite good uh, as well, especially good sea salt. Let's have a look now um, at another video we're going to do after this, the best natural treatment for diet to me for Thanks for tuning in.